uh, and it happens to, you know, every team where, you know, you get a little too comfortable on certain picks and then all of a sudden, you know, it's changed. Yeah. And now you have to change everything. So uh, it just takes a little bit. A lot of teams just need time in that regard. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, their losses and stuff like that coming here after the break. Uh, I expect them to be able to do very well for FlyQuest. That makes sense to me. Once again, with the Maokai locked in, we do see FlyQuest is going to be presumably saving that um, five <laughs> counter pick for Yo, Whippo. Is that jungle again. Maokai? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it could be. Okay. It's very possible. Like, I'm expecting it. If I were to say what FlyQuest is probably going for the uh, draft, I'm expecting the Karma to go mid and it mm -hmm. be a various Ash bot side with a Maokai oh. jungle. So that's my expectation. And it is a croc top lane for Fudge. And he a, called it out. And a Nidalee, though. Which True. is another champ who received buffs. Uh, and this is a really, really interesting combo, right? Because it's kind of been denigrated in the LCS, not for picking it, but in terms of execution. Because with the Renekton Nidalee, you do really want to try to snowball that super early. They work really well in tandem together. Um, so this composition coming out of C9, very interesting. Yeah, and just good setup. I mean, yes, we already talked about the, the Renekton setup, and it's been a classic, of course, historically, as you mentioned, the three-stack dive is always going to be a threat. But on top of that, you have Nautilus, which I think is a big win. The fact that any team fight, you have good setup for just Nidalee to land her Q fairly easily. So um, this is a pretty stock standard draft from C9 side. I mean, it's new for this meta that we're seeing both Nidalee and Renekton, so it's exciting in that way. But the fact that now that the Nidalee buffs happen, the Renekton buffs happen, and we're immediately going towards it, kind of speaks volumes on the comfort that these players have had on the champions historically. One interesting thing is Whippo's taking that Varus top. All right, let's head it over to Jet. Let's see what he has to say here. Thanks, guys. In celebration of LCS face-off, we're going to have JoJo and Inspired exchanging some words right before the game. Former junglers. JoJo, right now, buddy. Well, you're right. Well, JoJo's currently testing his audio. Inspired. What's up? Inspired, what do you have to say to your, your, your former mid laner here? Uh, what, what am I supposed oh, to tell you? Scary. Well, what do you want to say to him? How do you get in his head before a game? Well, I mean, uh, he's a good player. I, I hope he will manage to carry his for not that good teammates. So, I mean. I, I think Inspired's a great player. I think he'll succeed greatly. Um, much success to him. Is this it? Yeah, this it. is how you get in his head? That's you build him up? I mean, he is a good player. I so. mean, yeah. No, trash talk. I'm a nice guy, you know? Yeah, why would I trash talk him? Like, he is already suffering playing with those four bots. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but much success to him, much, much success to me. I hope we both play well, so yeah. Fair enough. Thanks, guys. Let's get into the game. A lot of people's mind when it comes to those MVP conversations. You know, how will he be able to cover Whippo on those potential dives? Uh, he is a guy who always seems to be right place, right time, knows how to play from ahead, knows how to play from behind to cover these potential dives, to cover these potential plays. As FlyQuest, five men stacked up, they are going to be charging out here towards bot side. They do have an incredibly strong level one. Double Halo Blades Marksman plus Karma has got to be some of the most powerful level ones you can have. So you can kind of just walk in, see if you can find someone, and there's not going to be that much of a cost to it. Yeah, and Maokai, of course, is one of the Raptor assassinators uh, with, the, <laughs> with the damage on the Q. You can take out the whole squad pretty effortlessly. So FlyQuest, they invade those Raptors. They get the vision down. Even get a nice little zombie ward there. Proking. I think they're just going to start down here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're going to split the map here versus a Senna Nautilus lane. You've got Ash and Varus, part of the reason that they answer with this. Maybe Try and pressure fun. them. Keep that Nidalee at bay. Keep it away from, from any sort of interference. And... Since it is going to be a supportive non-farming Senna here, the fasting Senna for Berserker, mm -hmm. it just makes it really hard for the Nautilus to actually farm. There's so much poke damage. Ash and Varus is brutal, and then your jungler is splitting the map too, and you're just like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, can be really tough. It is interesting, though, because it's the inverse of what we actually saw last game, right, where it was the farming Senna. It was that supportive style on the Nautilus. This time, obviously, the Nautilus is going to take TP as a result. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm almost always on the this style center, fasting center. I just yeah. feel like you get so much just extra Senna, value. Trying yeah. to hold her down. Don't want her to get gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want her to get souls her though. It's it's a nice thing though because okay. you want her to get rich souls. in souls. Yeah. Rich in souls. Exactly. Yeah. Rich in souls. Uh, it does mean that they're making Whiplow's job as hard as possible though. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we're splitting the bottom side of the map for our advantage. 
for the side of FlyQuest, but it does mean Whippo and the Aatrox is, guess what, left alone up there versus the Renekton in Italy. And this is really creating that scenario where you're super open to criticism if that risky duo doesn't pay off for Cloud9. Absolutely. And they are up against a really tough laning duo here. Varus, Ash, double hail of blades. You can see Busio already using the barrier. This is very common. You step forward, you just start shooting them, you force them to trade into you, and then you pop the bear to get that beneficial early trade here. So that is exactly what he does. Jensen going to be playing the Karma mid. Not something I feel like we've seen in the LCS so far, but Karma obviously has been getting play and support and has been really popular as a solo laner for quite some time. It's a really strong pick. It does scale well, especially when you're playing with this double marksman here. You know, the value from something like an Arden Sensor, even is gonna get value out of that, becomes pretty crazy. So I'll be interested to see if he is gonna go like full AP or one AP item into some of the supportive items, which I actually prefer in these kind of comps <laughs> where you have a lot of damage. Yeah, I I would guess that he's gonna go the blasting combo with the horizon focus and okay. the malignance. Full damage. Uh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm guessing for solo lanes, cause uh, that's what's really prominent now, but you're you're definitely right where you could go one of the more supportive builds. Um, you know, let's see, is Busio yeah. going to be Caria in the bottom lane as, <laughs> as this ass support or not? Uh, uh, if he is, you, you better be buying that Arden Sensor, yeah, let me tell yeah, exactly. you what. That guy's going to pump out some damage, so we'll see how it's going to work out. Jensen taking the bad end of a lot of these trades here. Jojo doing well thus far, just keeping the minions between them. Uh, there is that mantra. Uh, Soul Flare coming out, and you're not going to be able to actually tag Jojo. Pretty common to see people looking to actually splash that from the range means onto him. Also, really interesting to see Jojo taking Grasp. I can't say I've seen this. People generally do just take Fleet uh, to be able to actually have that kind of sustained style. But the Grasp, he's going to be trading pretty heavily into it. I will say I'm seeing more and more champions take double scaling HP runes and then just splash Grasp in, and it's become a little bit of like this arms race of wait, all of a sudden you have like 3k HP now and you're yeah. and you're getting really tanky. So I don't know if he's really going to cook and do like Roa and stuff because I've seen some people do crazy stuff like that or if it's just going to be, hey, I think Grasp is pretty good for the lane and then I'll be normal. Yeah, these these Grasp is here. It's getting kind of annoying. Just just with a little <laughs> bit of, a, of, of HP. When, when you go in for the big plays, though. Do something for the tanks. You know, Come a, on. A, a little bit of extra HP goes a long way. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he pulls it off here. Um, Jojo. Uh, no... That no. Nautilus has no farm, by the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that's kind of what we expected, right? It's, yeah. it's a top lane, little bit of extra advantage there. I mean, Fudge got his... Yes. So you told, you told me you like it when the Senna doesn't farm. Yeah. How do you like it when both the Senna and the Nautilus don't farm? That's not good. <laughs> that's not Somebody's good? got to farm his Oh, come on! Someone's don't get gonna, ridiculous! There's, there's money on the ground. Okay. And Pick it up. You're just not picking it you're up. You're too good for that? Yeah, it's like they're walking down the street I'll and they pick it see up. it. The only problem is uh, you're, you're trying to pick it up, and then Masu and Busio slap your hand. Oh, uh, right? yeah, that's kind of messed that's up. That's not for you. No. Okay. That is not for you. Is there, like, do you have, like, a, a limit on, like, how how much money it has to be for you to be willing to pick it up? We'll see if there's going to be a dive here, the stunt into the spear. Hi, what do you no know? chance for Aatrox. Now you see him, now you don't. Renekton in Italy, baby. It's back, and it's a first bud for Biber. Run from it. Dread it. You know it's coming. A stun into a spear, but we've seen it a thousand times. Still works. Good as old. They do get the playoff under tower two, so uh, that is nice. Even though Whipple has his teleport, so Whipple right back out to the lane uh, while Blabber picks up these uh, grubbies. The benefits of splitting top end. You can um, see uh, these are the the stats of these two. You know, throughout this split so far this year. Also, in the head-to-head, -head, Bwipo is 2-1, to one, uh, so they've only played against each other three times. So these are not just their head-to-head -head stats, yeah. but head-to-head, -head, it is 2-1 to one in Bwipo's favor. And you see there, the, the big thing that stands out, of course, you know, these guys are number one and number two in average laning stats here with the goal difference, but the solo kills. Bwipo has, has done a lot solo, uh, you know, getting, getting for himself, whereas uh, Fudge here with the goose egg, and, you know, when Nidalee comes over and, and uh, is the one to, to land the spear, still going to be zero for solo. But it's yep. a team game. Team game. That's why you pick that combo. Yeah. And Super it's, easy. It's KP kill. just went up. Exactly. That's a dub. We'll count that. Plus, let's be honest, as a top laner, you could be down 20 CS, but if you solo kill that guy, you're like, oh, you're flexing on him. You know, you're feeling good. Definitely true. Yeah. yeah. The, honestly, the best feeling in the game for anyone is solo killing their opponent. And then having your teammates hype you up and type diff of the question whatever. marks whatever diff <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah yeah
With the question marks, that's that's maximum dopamine. Yeah. It's interesting how that has evolved. Question mark to be the harshest flame or the or the biggest praise that you can yeah. get. Jensen versus Cloud9. Actually, a better record than I would have expected. You know, given some of his times on some of the teams where he was struggling. So this is against Cloud9. Obviously, a lot of time with TL, some time with Dig. Yeah. 18 and 23. Not too bad. Yeah, I think a lot of those W's are coming from his time on Team Liquid. You don't know that? Them. I uh, actually do know that. Cause okay. <laughs> oh, well, you called me on it. You call I didn't expect you to call on that. I thought you were just going to be like, you know what? You're right. Sometimes you get called. You know, I went for it. <laughs> there you go. Didn't there. work out. So we're going to miss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, yeah. Jensen, uh, this time around on FlyQuest, he, he's the one at the top of the standings actually looking mm -hmm. down at Cloud9. But Cloud9 but wishes they could be. <laughs> they're also staring down this gold lead. Um, of course, a lot off of you know jungle and top side of the map, and mm -hmm. and grubbies versus dragon. Of course, the grubs do give a lot more experience than the extra gold, um, as well. In addition to the buff versus the dragon, that does not give as much. All right. Well, Vulcan back here down towards bot. Farm has equalized. There's gonna be a little bit more farm here to be picked up, you know, for Masu if he can get back in time. Busio obviously would like to try to thin that way of hold it for him if he can. Uh, but Vulcan doing all right, and Berserker's actually picked up a decent amount of farm himself. So I think what they are doing is very likely Berserker is picking up farm until the farm penalty comes in, yep. and then you know just proccing that support. So you can do those optimizations. And I'm always a fan of once you fully transform your support, giving more of the gold to the Senna at that point anyway. Yeah, it's like uh, when people are like, oh yeah, I'm going on a new diet, I'm fasting. But, uh, you know, I'm also still going to have... That cheesecake's looking pretty nice. I'm still nice. having lunch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Berserk is like, I'm kind of going to fast. Uh, but not that much. All right, we'll see. Inspired in some trouble now. Oh, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow Ooh. from downtown locks down Fudge. You know what? That's the FlyQuest version of the Renekton Nidalee. They actually got the, the spear, but it was a ash arrow instead of a spear. <laughs> and Busio nails him from downtown to set up Whippo. Whippo's like, I could do that too, buddy. Yep. Two is on the other foot. The croc is on the other boot. It, in fact, it's easy to kill people that are stunned. Yeah. Facts. It's a good strat. Yeah. Why Stun them up. Honestly, really nice stuff there from Busio, though. You know, we had the questions of, is this bottom lane going to be, you know, the carrier uh, style ash here? Uh, or is it going to be a flop? And so far, Masu and Busio, who are a big story for this FlyQuest roster, the, the youngest on the team. Uh, Masu, of course, was the most valuable prospect. Mm -hmm. And then Busio was the most valuable prospect the previous year. So combining them as like the, the, value. the young guys on the team to, to, to really come up under the leadership of all the other veterans from the top side of the map here for FlyQuest has been a recipe for success so far this year. So far, sounds like they're getting the gold star from Kobe. And Jim Jim is a fan as well. That's the second gold star. <laughs> there you go, two gold That's stars. We'll see how many it can get as it's going to be Blabber back on the Grubbies. He got all three, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, on the first one. So going to be looking to try to get all six. At the very least, if you get five, you start getting those Void Might spines, which does feel really, really nice. Um, we'll see the Crane Shannon Crystal Arrow. This um, one is going to whiff, unless it's, okay. it's another cross map one. <laughs> that one. We we didn't see that. It's chill. We saw. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I called you earlier. Yeah, yeah. You called me on that yeah. one. You know How's it feel, Kobe? Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. I understand. We did. We did in fact see it as well. Um, swing and a miss. It's fine. Uh, they're still they're still keeping the pressure up. You know, trying to push under tower here. Of course, they're not the ones getting the Void Grubs, but they're the ones with the double range access to the tower, so they've gotten the turret plate. Yeah. Uh, some of the times when you get full six Void Grubs, you don't get a lot of the returns early in the game when you don't have super hard pushing lanes, and Cloud9 are going to have to get those benefits a little bit later uh, as you split into a little bit of split pushing mm -hmm. and try and get those towers. And we'll see. I mean, because so far, Whipple looking pretty good. But we're going to have the depth charge coming in. It's going to try to set up that spear. Busio blocks the spear, but might be to his own chagrin. Egg on his face. Blabber going to be able to take him down. Does protect Masu at the very least and does save him from flashing and doesn't use his flash as well. Has to give up his life, though. All right, Cloud9 on the warpath. That is two for Blabber, two for the Nidalee. This is a champion. You mentioned it previously. If they don't win with it, if it does poorly, people love to pile on. And especially if the Nidalee is getting all the money too, a lot of weight here is on Blabber's shoulders. We'll see yeah. though, because uh, it's really nice to rush into an early Lich Bane. 
This is the best, you know, assassin burst damage uh, AP item that you've got in the game since Storm Surge was absolutely murdered. And so Lich Bane picked up here super early for Blabber off the first two kills. See if he can make FlyQuest really feel Fly that pain. Opponents after this. Yeah, we'll see. And obviously that last fight on top side, you know, he called out. Blabber obviously got the first blood, and it was Bwimpo who got a kill on to Fudge. So, you know, he should be ahead in gold. Uh, there was a plate that went over to Fudge's blade, so it might be close. But drops are back. If you didn't know, when the next six explodes, maybe you'll win a prize. You gotta watch on LOL Esports. Watch on LOL Esports.com, I do believe. Uh, to be able to claim those prizes. And Bustio, as you called out, has that enchanted crystal arrow ready and waiting. Gonna be searching with the hawk shot. Doesn't find any target, but they do find an easy dragon. Yeah, he was hovering there in the little pocket of fog of war, standing Buzz behind going the wall. in. Dominus Pop gonna be looking for the ruthless predator on the Whippo. He's trying to kite back. He got no cooldowns right now, but Blabber's coming in. Blabber with the heel. It's a flash out from Fudge. Gonna be able to keep him alive and narrowly dodge the Enchanted Crystal Arrow there. They get the kill on to Bwipo. Again, it goes to Blabber, though. Three and zero on the Nidalee. Okay, Blabber shows up again. Another kill for Nidalee. It's gonna be a fed jungle. Oh, we're really gonna put Nidalee to the test this game. Mm -hmm. Let's see it. Uh, checking on uh, Berserker stacks here. 39 so far for the Senna. Uh, even with so much pressure coming from, uh, you know, kind of hard lane matchup early on. Jungle getting split against them. Oh, there's the Emperor's Divide pushing Jensen back. Jensen trying to flash out, but I don't think he can create enough space. He gets the Mantra Tether. It gives him a little bit of a heal, but it's not going to be enough. Thumbs up from JoJo. Inspired answering with one in kind. He's like, yeah, okay, I see you, bro. <laughs> Nicely done. Berserker now stepping forward onto Busio here. Busio should be fine. Has the meetings between him and Vulcan, so no chance of a hook coming through, but it's Fudge slicing forward once again. Poking away here at the Bwipo, and he's got the Sundered Sky down now. It's Demolish on, on Jojo, because he's playing Grasp. It's Demolish yeah. on the Renekton as well, and it is six Void Grubs. So when they get access, they're really starting to rack up the gold, and all of a sudden, it's a 3k gold lead now here for Cloud9. After that kill on top side, a couple plates went down. Kill mid, a couple plates go down. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of how jungle does give you extra gold for your laners. Even if I'm taking all the kills as Italy as Blabber, I'll focus on the early Void Grubs, so you get your, your global gold there, and then once you get a kill, just go to town on the turret plates. Mm -hmm. JoJo gets paid, and he gets his Landry's for it. Made that deposit early, mm -hmm. you know? Now it's paying off. So don't cry to me when I'm well, about the kills, okay? Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I play with Flowers, oh. he always tells me killing the Void Grubs is my gank. Yeah, there you go. He's like, hey, I did something for you. Now go to the tower, get some gold from that. Because yeah. he's not coming all the way up there. There's no camp in top lane. He's not going to give you a fish, Azale. He's teaching <laughs> you how to fish. He's teaching me how to grub. We'll, exactly. see, uh, we'll see if that pays off here for Blabber. Four kills on him. What kind of build do you want to see him go from here? Obviously, you know, we're seeing a lot of Lich Bane. Very, very powerful. When you're 4-0, you're playing the Nidalee. Are you just going full AP from here? Do you like some of the more supportive styles that some people go into with this more strong heal style that we see from Nidalee? Honestly, for competitive, I kind of do. Um, for solo queue, definitely the snowballing. Just play for yourself, build for yourself. Just completely blast people. I feel like for competitive, since there's going to be a lot more five on fives, mm -hmm. um, and it, it just makes it really hard against good players to do, you know, full nidally actually making a lot of use of uh, of cat form and, and going all the way in. Um, maybe spread the love and use your gold for for a little bit of a, of a supportive angle. At least the safety of a Zonios is mm -hmm. super nice when you do choose your moments and go for some of the big plays. The extra time there. Um, playing around the rest of your team, being able to back you up. And Blabber, as you know, likes to be one of the first in. So mm -hmm. Zonia's definitely a super good item for him. Yeah, allows you to just dive right in there, make something happen. And we are really ahead. Sometimes you can dive right in there, one-shot someone, go into the stasis, have the rest of the squad come in to protect you. JoJo, by the way, I just checked, he's progressed 36 times. That's kind of insane. And you are getting HP every single time you do proc that, you know, permanently increasing your health by seven. So I'm not going to do the math, but that's quite a bit of HP given in there. He has the Leandries, he has the Merc Shreds, he has a Cloth Armor in his inventory as well, which maybe he's going towards the Zonias or something like that as well. He has double Lethality users in the bot lane. Aatrox almost always builds some Lethality as well up in the top lane. So there's definitely value in having at least a little bit of armor, oh, even yeah. if you just sit on it. Yeah, definitely, definitely true. And especially when you're playing poke like this, when you're playing against a, a Varus and a Karma, um, even to some degree an Ash here. Any little bit of extra padding is going to be super nice. And now JoJo can transfer into the side lanes here. Dream scenario for Cloud9. Mid turret taken already. 
the entire jungle just opens up to you, uh, and you get to have some more side laning with not only your Renekton, but also your Azir, and JoJo confidently is gonna move up, make use of his Demolish again, make use of those six Void Grubs again, mm -hmm. and really snowball. This is what people are talking about for scrims for Cloud9, completely blasting, so really good job by them moving oh, the game look forward. at that hook there from Vulcan, buffered on the Chains of Corruption. It's all for nothing from Masu. Doesn't amount to much there. It does use the ulti, and as you said, they have been looking good. Now the TP coming in here, and it's the call in for help as Whippo needs it from Jensen. He arrives, the Dominus has been popped, and Fudge winning the 1v2 doesn't look like it, but it is getting close. The Sundered Sky heals are making a lot of time, and the cooldowns come back up. There's the Dawning Shadow from Cross Map. Fudge gets the kill in the 1v2 with a little help from his pal Berserker. Whippo gonna trade one back, but it cost him his flash to do it. It cost the TP from Jensen as yeah. well. You're calling worth. You definitely are for Fudge there. Huge, huge, and now he's gonna get a teleport from Jojo. Can Jojo catch him? They see him. All right. Okay, Jojo gonna be stepping up here. We'll see if he can actually find it. Um, and it's gonna be Whippo gonna getting chased down and taken down here. Easy kill, no alt, no flash, nothing really he can do about that. So JoJo trades one back in the knee. Super extended play, it's uh -huh. even better for Cloud9. Was already worth and now just got extra games on top of it. <laughs> nice little bonus. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know, you, you order some nuggies and there's an extra one. <laughs> nice. You get yeah. a bonus nuggie. Perfect. Sweet. JoJo with the uh, the bonus nugget and so, uh, you know, he gets a kill for himself, actually, too. Mm -hmm. He's gone frozen heart on top of, uh, you know, a lot Ooh, of the HP. I was not expecting that. I will tell you I'll tell you that much. I thought it was just going to be uh, working towards the Zonias or Seekers or Jojo's something. JoJo's going in. That's what, that's what I'm seeing. JoJo is getting yeah. in there. He's going to make use of that aura. He's going to make sure that aura is in range to apply the attack speed reduction. Yep. And uh, we'll see how that does pay off for him. I mean, the grass, so far, so good. And he is going to have a ton of HP, very likely is doing that scaling HP rune style. Um, a lot of people are doing a rise, but it has become very popular across so many different champions. Dominus being caught there from Fudge will push Whippo back, who responds with the World Ender. Nice sidestep on the dredge line coming through as Vulcan fires that out, but Whippo able to dodge it. Either way, though, Cloud9 claim the tower. All right, they're not going to stop there either. Look at this pressure, love it. Rotate right over to mid lane where JoJo had pushed up the wave. Everybody spawn your Void Mites. They get in range, the Void Mites keep coming. The Siege lasts even longer. All right, quick little update here. We are having some production issues, ha uh, have lost power in some area. We won't be able to change the video source. We are just going to be sticking on the one observer for now. Uh, we'll give you any updates as those do come in. But Cloud9 pushing forward here again. again. Buffers on the chains of corruption. Vulcan looking clean on the Nautilus. I mean, Cloud9 Cloud overall are so calm right now. It seems to be such a clinical game for them with this draft, playing off the pressure for top side of the map. They're fine with the jungle split early on. You know, whatever, uh, boohoo, Vulcan didn't get a few extra CS on the Nautilus in the, in the first stages, and one turret plate went over. But the snowball, incredibly effective for them, especially now that they're opening up the map and they've got all these split push options. It just seems like this, this Bruiser Azir is going to be a menace in the side lane. And Fudge as well already had a few laughs for himself here too. So Cloud9, pretty good uh, mid-stage game where they can just play those side lanes, use their split push. They've got the teleport ready here on Fudge. Um, Cloud9, of course, when we're trying to talk up, or FlyQuest, we're talk up their uh, their options here. Jensen, of course, did go with the blasting combo, the classic here for Karma, the Horizon Focus and the, and the Malignants. Um, but it's, you know, they're they're really going to need to get some value out of this poke. They've got Lethality Varus on two items and Karma on two items right now. Like, you you got to get some value now with this. Yeah, it's it's hard. And Blabber, you know, he just did the pit stop on that Seeker's arm guard. He's going straight towards Death Cap. So those heals are going to be massive. There's also Senna heals. I feel like it's going to be really tough to poke them down, even if you're landing those abilities. You have to look more for like a 100 to 0 burst than you do just a little bit of chip here. Vulcan moving up towards top side. So Fudge playing safe on that bottom side. As he knows, his entire team is pushing up towards this top lane tier two and should be able to claim it pretty easily. Jensen, Busio, Masu in the area but it is going to be too little too late there from FlyQuest as they're just going to watch another tower crumble and Cloud9's gold lead extend to 6.4K. Absolutely beautiful from Cloud9. People are wondering, is this team going to make the changes necessary in the two-week break to climb back up the standings? And so far here versus the number one team, 
It seems like a resounding yes. Mm -hmm. Playing off the early pressure, uh, keeping up pressure on the map here for every single secondary tower down here. 22 minutes approaching. And now, if they just push into the jungle, take over Vision in jungle, they can force a lot of these plays on the Baron. It's it's so early here uh, for for FlyQuest. It's kind of kind of rough scenario because you've got a lot of turn potential. The Azir with the tanky build can turn Abyssal on now you. even as well. Yeah, and Vulcan is ready to go. He's got Flash ready on Nautilus, Ultimate ready. He's got his level 11 for the rank two Ultimate, by the way. Vulcan is two levels above Abusio. So uh, yeah, I mean, plan for Cloud9 looks wide open here, and FlyQuest got to get creative. Mm -hmm. Fudge on the round here, but is in the area. We'll see if they can chase him down. The slice Arrow. connects on nothing, so he has no dice. There's the Enchanted Crystal Darrow. The tether is going to be there. The TPs are coming in here. Jojo arrives, Blabber in the area. FlyQuest will have to disengage. Inspired hunting on the side. Jojo goes for it. Nice flash out from Busio. is going to keep him safe from the Emperor's Divide. But Jojo tethered up and Whippo's flashing in. Here comes the Dawning Shadow from Berserker. Just barely going to keep Jojo alive. Who's just too damn tanky for FlyQuest. Vulcan now in the back line. Blabber is here. FlyQuest are shattered and they're on the run. No one dropping on the Cloud9 side. You try to burst down that Azir. This tanky build paying dividends there big time for Jojo. Yep, with the Nidalee, with the Senna, keeping them upright, and Baron is going down for sure. Cloud9, they don't drop a player. They have dominated this game. They have dominated this top side of the map and this Void Pit. All six mites, mm -hmm. plus the Rift Herald, plus the Baron here for them as well. Cloud9 controlling purple. And look at that bottom side of the map too. Jojo even gonna chase FlyQuest away. Slap yeah. their hands away this exactly. time around from the dragon. That's not yours. <laughs> Get off the map. It was theirs earlier, so they were, but they were just lending it to them, you uh, know? Yeah. They were they were renting it out. Time's the Baron up. Pit, the Baron Pit has been Cloud 9's the whole game. Uh -huh. And now it's Cloud 9's time to take over the timeshare down in the Dragon Pit as well. <laughs> the vacation home. Yeah, it's the vacation home, exactly. <laughs> they leased it out to FlyQuest for the first two dragons. And yeah. they're like, ah, you know what? Now it's prime time. You got like the, the winter months or something. Exactly. We already did everything there is to do up in the up in the Baron Pit. They took the grubs, uh -huh. they took a herald. Work is done. Baron. Now exactly. they're going for <laughs> This place is boring. Let's check out something else. All right, well, let's see if FlyQuest can maybe get some objective bounties is what you're trying to look at now. You can tell out. by the tone of voice that you don't believe they can get this. Well, the top lane, they could for Jojo sure get that one trouble, at least. though. We'll see if they're going to be able to get him killed. They did lock him down. A nice buffer there on the W from Inspire, dodging out on the Emperor's Divide. Vulcan now needs to go on the run. The Chains of Corruption making a big difference there from Masu, able to nail Jojo, and they do lock him down despite that tanky build to get the kill. Whippo is pushing out on that top side. Not going to be able to go any further. Cloud9 will get the dragon, but it is at least one pick, and it's a little bit of time that they buy themselves. Yeah, FlyQuest, we finally get our first kind of opening here. Objective bounty on top side while they get the pick onto Azir. So, as you're saying, some money back to them. But Cloud9 kind of quickly stabilized. They're like, okay. You know, nice, nice little pick there for you. And yeah, you got your objective bounty. They retreat back to the dragon and uh, try and at least keep the pace there. Yep. And Blabber did turn one of those two rods into a Zonia's. Now is back on two rods. So he's restocked up. We'll see if they're going to become a hat this time. When you go for the early Lich main, that's adding another AP ratio to your kit. So like you just need to get more many AP. rods as you want. Can't have too many. Death cap is is actually amazing. Mm -hmm. um, adding an extra extra ratio in there. Now you get the multiplier. Looking pretty beefy. We can see Opportunity has been purchased for both Masu and Berserker, an item that's definitely gaining a lot of steam uh, as people are realizing how strong it can be, especially in these poke-style champions. It works perfectly with Varus' kit, right? You're sitting back, you're not constantly hitting with the Lethality. When you're out of combat for a bit, you get the bonus Lethality, you get that extra damage on those big Qs that you're looking for, but it's Cloud9 grouping up five top, looking to push forward here. They've got a lot of engage. FlyQuest's gonna be have to be so careful. Nature's Grasp, Use here from Inspire just to keep them safe so they can clear out the wave as Masu is <laughs> running back. Jojo, Jojo got hit. It took that arrow in the face. He had Merc Trez and he just got it one nidalee heal and he's like, thumbs up. <laughs> nice one. He just yeah. stares it down. Tanky we'll Azir. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the Senate, the Senate heal there on, on Blabber, 220. Mm. The heal that was thrown on Jojo was 300 as well from uh, Blabber. So that is a ridiculous amount of healing. If you don't kill them off instantly, the poke just means nothing. Cloud9. 
seem to have really expertly answered what FlyQuest have crafted with their composition, and FlyQuest gonna have to give up this inhibitor without a fight. They try to clear the wave, they try to hold it as long as they can, but it just bought them a little bit of a time, and now Cloud9 setting up shop here as they're gonna raise their own tower in the mid lane and look to play around that. Taking over more space, okay. <laughs> We're slowly moving across the map. More and more Cloud9 territory. Watch less the FlyQuest here, Zale. They, they've, they've only got they inside, the wall, inside the walls of their own base, basically. They could have the fountain, you know, they could yeah. sleep in there. Okay, okay. Fair enough. What more do you need, the you know? The soothing sounds of your fountain. <laughs> and for is now, it, for now, soothing, you or is it like starts? haunted? Because that's where people respawn. <laughs> True. You know, like, can you hear like, the screams of your teammates oh <laughs> while they're dead. Yeah, exactly right. Like, think of it, it can be a messed up place. Then they just pop out of the ground out of nowhere. Are they gonna be happy about that? Now I'm gonna have nightmares about the fountain yeah. and uh, all the ghosts. There you go. <laughs> Why do you acquired. think when you spawn in the game, you gotta leave the fountain quick? Right. Otherwise, you're gonna be haunted. They'll follow you out there. It's kind of messed up. Fountain did just get a buff too. Uh, the healing is faster now, there so at least you can get out of there quicker. <laughs> That's I guess. true. Yeah. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Before the psychic damage. Yeah, exactly. It really takes hold. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Honestly, FlyQuest might be getting out of here pretty quick too, though. I uh, think so. Eight thousand, the gold lead for Cloud9, and yeah, I mean, with with all the answers here to the poke that they've gone over, I mean. Uh, the onslaught of Siege will continue. Cloud9 looking to play on mid and bottom, of course. Top side, Super Minions will do the job for them. So mm -hmm. JoJo fairly safe in mid just to keep this one while they slowly usher up bottom side. Fudge doing his work. Yep, going to be continually shoving this in. You know, we normally talk a lot about Azir scaling, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know how this build scales. Um, I mean, it seems like the base damage is, it seems like he's still doing real damage. Yeah, looking pretty good hard, to me. Hard to knock down. It's, it's a pretty cool build. I think it actually makes a lot of sense against this composition specifically, where it is so much about the poke, it is so much about the burst. You know, they, they've drafted for healing from Nidalee, healing from Senna. They've drafted really durable laners. The only way they can do anything is if they can one-shot. You can't one-shot this Azir. There's the Emperor's Divide and Whippo. He's not nearly as tanky as that Azir. Wishes he was, but he's going to go down in a hurry as Cloud9 step forward. There's the Flash. The Depth Charge connects onto Masu, and it's the Dredge Line onto Busio. You thought they were going for 180 carry, but they can take either one of them as Masu's going to flash out. Inspired Twisted Advance forward, but it's not going to mean anything. This is Cloud9's base now. They're pushing forward and looking to put the finishing touches on this one, Kobe. Cloud9, they've made the adjustments. They are back with a vengeance. Cloud9 coming off that two week break and looking damn good after it. JoJo flying forward, looking to knock down these final members here. FlyQuest trying to turn it around on the Berserker who is getting low and they have the benefit of that fountain healing them up here, but it's not gonna mean much. Cloud9 gonna be able to finish off the Nexus here in sub 30 minutes and they are back, baby. Looking strong after the two week break. A dominant win over FlyQuest. We are so back. Woo. Until tomorrow. <laughs> loose, never mind. <laughs> but for now, we're well, back. Honestly, really, really good stuff there from Cloud9. Not worried for a second. The rumors. Oh. Got a little, little quick listening. All right, Jack's yeah. ready. Let's take it away. You can if you, if you want to. Do you want to check damage? This is a big win. Yeah. Who did more? Was it the Azir or the uh, or the Nidalee? Definitely not the Nidalee. I wasn't dealing any damage this game. I was just pressing E on my Azir while he walked forward. We're trolling to not get the damage. What is going on here? Right there, bro. Oh, I'm, I'm bro, so... Okay. I think we're done here. No, uh, anyway, Blabber, uh, big win after the break. What did you work on the most during the, the break weeks? Um, I would say, like, we kind of just try to figure out what our team identity was um, on this team and what was working for us, and... Uh, we just started shifting, I guess, our style into what worked more for us, and we just had to talk about, hey, what, what's best for us as a team, what chance we should be playing, and yeah, I guess it worked out today. And how does the Renekton factor into all this fudge? Renekton in Italy is broken. Renekton is back. C9 fudge, Renekton is back. The croc. The croc in the top. The croc in the top. Uh, Blabber, uh, another... another Follow up on the Nidalee and the season so far. You guys are now five and five. So, like, what are you really focused on throughout the rest of the regular season? Only four more games left. Um, well, currently we're still focused on getting into playoffs. Um, it's not it's not guaranteed, and uh, 
it's looking rough right now. Actually, not that bad. After we win today, it's not looking that rough, but it was looking pretty rough before. So uh, I think our goal is still to uh, make it to play playoffs right now. Yeah. And JoJo, since, since you walked past, we got the pregame trash talk. Do you feel like your compliments to Inspired had any impact on the victory today? Yeah, I was definitely in his head, and C9's back, so yeah. <laughs> uh, any, any final thoughts, Blabber? No. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it from here. On the other side of this, we have another uh, episode from the latest Are You Smarter Than and then Energy versus TL. And Fudge is happy. C9 is happy after this one. <laughs>